efferent and uh, efferent arterial resistance is uh, control both uh, glomerular plasma flow and the uh, GFR glomerular filtration rate. The renal microvasculature has two unique features. First, this vascular bed has two major sites of resistance control, the efferent and the efferent arterioles. Second, it has two capillary beds in series, the glomerular and the peritubular capillaries. As a consequence of this unique architecture, significant pressure drops occur in both arterioles. Uh, we can see that from figure 33 to 7, glomerular capillary pressure is relatively high throughout, and the peritubular capillary pressure is relatively low. Selective uh, constriction or relaxation of the efferent and efferent arterioles allows for highly sensitive control of the hydrostatic pressure in the intervening glomerular capillary and thus of a glomerular filtration. For example, if we reciprocally change efferent and efferent arterial resistance while keeping total arterial resistance and thus glomerular plasma flow constant compared with an initial condition in which the efferent and the efferent arterial resistances are the same, constricting the efferent arterially, uh, while relaxing the efferent, efferent arterially lowers uh, PGC, that is, uh, glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. Conversely, constricting the efferent arterially while relaxing the efferent arterially raises uh, glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. From this idealized uh, glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure responses, one might predict that an increase in efferent arterial resistance would decrease the glomerular filtration rate, and that an increase in uh, efferent arterial resistance should have the opposite effect. However, Physiological changes in the efferent and efferent arterial resistance usually do not keep overall arterial resistance constant. Thus, changes in arterial resistance generally lead to changes in glomerular plasma flow, which, as discussed earlier, can influence glomerular filtration rate independent of glomerular capillary repressure. And there are more realistic effects on renal plasma flow and uh, glomerular filtration rate as we change the resistance of a single arterially with a selective increase of uh, efferent arterial resistance, both capillary pressure and uh, renal plasma flow decreases, leading to a monotonic decline in glomerular filtration rate. In constant, a selective increase of uh, efferent arterial resistance causes a steep increase in glomerular capillary pressure, but also a decrease in renal plasma flow. As a result, over the lower range of resistances, glomerular filtration rate increases with the uh, efferent resistance as an increasing glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure dominates. On the other hand, at higher resistances, glomerular filtration rate begins to fall as the effect of a declining renal plasma flow dominates. These opposing effects on glomerular capillary pressure and uh, renal plasma flow account for the biphasic dependence of glomerular filtration rate on efferent resistance during sympathetic stimulation or in response to angiotensin 2, both uh, efferent and efferent resistances increase. Thus, renal plasma flow decreases. The general opposing effect on 
glomerular filtration rate of increasing both uh, afferent resistance and efferent resistance explain why the combination of both keeps glomerular filtration rate fairly constant despite a decline in renal plasma flow. There are realistic cases in which changes in either the efferent or the efferent arterial resistance dominates. A striking case in which a decrease in efferent arterial resistance dominates is the large increase in renal plasma flow that occurs with the loss of renal tissue. As after a nephrectomy in a kidney donor, glomerular filtration rate in the remnant kidney nearly doubles owing primarily to a dramatic decrease in the resistance of the efferent arterially. An example of a predominantly efferent arterial effect is seen after administrations of uh, angiotensin II inhibitors, uh, that is, uh, for example, heptopril, to patients with uh, hypertension that is due to increased uh, endogenous uh, angiotensin levels. Administering such agents not only decreases blood pressure, but also often leads to a significant fall in glomerular filtration rate. If we imagine that the resultant peak of the glomerular filtration rate curve represents a patient before treatment, then reducing the resistance of the efferent arterially would indeed cause glomerular filtration rate to decrease.